the uh, agenda of the Palestinians and the Arab world, for that matter, is a one-state solution, a one-state solution. You heard me right, a one-state solution, and it's not a Jewish state. It's, it, it's not. Uh, Israel is standing in the way in a region that is fervently Muslim, and you have the Jewish state in the middle, and it's a little tiny piece of land. Listen, it's not about that it's a, not about land. land. It's, there, it's not a not tiny about piece land. of land. It's about uh, uh, world domination, uh, not not so much by the Arabs, but by b believing Muslims, and and that's the agenda. And Israel standing in the way, and it's a one-state solution, and it's not the Jewish state. Dennis. Well, we have a phone call from Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan. Are you on the line? Hello. Hey, Shalom, Grand Rapids. Tell us your name and your question. My name is Dave. McClellan, and my question is, is the 1993 peace accord signed by Gasser Arafat and Shamal Perez, is that still considered a valid peace agreement between the two, between the two countries? Well, yes and no. Uh, it would be by, it's a very good question, by the way. Thank you, David. It would be Israel, any, any of the, the accords, uh, Oslo, Camp David, uh, would be uh, that would be valid by on the part of Israel if the Palestinians would adhere to the agreements. They have not. Uh, let me give you one example. Uh, a requirement for peace is that the Palestinians recognize the state of Israel, but the PLO charter remains committed to the destruction of Israel. This has never been removed. It was clearly stipulated in the Oslo Accords and was never adhered to if you look at the PLO charter, it still calls for the destruction of the state of Israel. So yes and no, Israel would love peace. And Israel has been over backwards for peace. That's the truth. But um, I, I don't believe ultimately that um, the Palestinians do want peace. I'm sure there's some, but uh, they, they will not uh, settle until Israel is destroyed. And if they do settle for a two-state solution, it's only a temporary step till they can fulfill their ultimate uh, goal of pushing Israel into the sea. Very good question, David. Thank you very much. We'd love to hear from you, 888-777-0782. Let's look at another clip from my recent interview with Bill McKay. Is peace possible? Take a look. Why is it important for Christians to stand with Israel? And are we saying that God is preferring one people over another when we are against a Palestinian state? No, and, and I, as a, a, a Christian and a, and a deeply committed believer, I have no doubt in my mind that, that the Lord of hosts loves the Palestinians as much as he loves the Jewish people. Uh, God is no respecter of persons, and that's plural. Uh, you know, so uh, you start with that as the predicate, but as one who has spent thousands of hours in the West Bank and Gaza, and I know the enemies of Israel. I've been in the homes of the terrorists. I've been in the homes of the leadership of the PLO. I've been there face to face, Jonathan. I know these people. They will never, never, never accept a two-state solution. This is a myth that has been uh, innocently and sweetly perpetuated by the Western cultures. Uh, you know, in our naivete. And we've bought into it completely. We've bought into it. And, and it's on the theory that a half a loaf is better than no loaf. That's the Western mind. But in the Arab culture, it's one loaf. It's one state. And they have no intent on dividing uh, Jerusalem. They have no intent in dividing that country. This is why... So if there was a Palestinian state alongside of Israel, it would just be a strategy to eventually get the whole loaf. It's an absolute staging loaf. ground, yeah. And, and this explains why Arafat, uh, in the year 2000, under the tutelage of Bill Clinton... Uh, walked out of Taba and said no to a 97% solution. Now, that's the best deal anybody could get anywhere in the history of mankind. And he said no. And the reason he said no was because he believed in a one-state solution. Mm. We need to understand this. So why, is, why should Christians be concerned about Israel, standing with Israel? Well, in simple terms, Israel is alone. The entire world has made the decision that a final solution has to happen. And I think unless the Christians who know and love the Lord are willing to put their lives on the line for Israel, 
then no one else will. Boy, very, you couldn't hear it stated any, any better than that. And the only friend that Israel will ultimately have are Bible-believing Christians. So I hope you that are watching will make that commitment to stand in the gap for Israel. 888 Love to take your phone call. Is peace possible? Understanding the Middle East conflict. Dennis? We have Lisa in uh, Missouri who has a question. Lisa, you're on the line. Yes, I am. Hi, Shalom, Lisa. How are you? Jonathan. Hi. God bless you. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. I just have a question. Um, a lot of uh, people from other countries are going, doing their aliyah back to Israel. I was cur curious to know if you, there's any from the United States going back to Israel. You never hear that. You, uh, yeah, because there's not that many. Israel has had different periods, or the U.S. Th over different periods of time. In 1929, there was a, a, a community from America that uh, established uh, a, a settlement in, in Israel. Uh, there's been a, a, f a very small flow of Jews, American Jews, going to Israel, making Aliyah, and you have proportionately a much larger percentage of Messianic Jews that are going to Israel because when one accepts Yeshua, they're connected to the God of Israel, and that pull to go to Israel starts to grow. I felt it. I was going to make uh, my, uh, I actually made Aliyah in 1990, uh, got my citizenship, and then uh, it was clear the Lord was calling me to the former Soviet Union. Uh, but yes, but not in large numbers like we've seen from the uh, former Soviet Union. Uh, but there's a significant number of American Jews that are uh, that made Aliyah and live in Israel today. Ronnie, your mom's yeah, one, your Canadian. mom's one yeah. of them is a Canadian. My, my mom moved to Israel. She she it was very interesting because my parents got divorced in the early 80s, and she got all into Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism, and totally embraced then that Orthodox uh, Hasidic life figured that she could live out that life easier in, in Israel and actually moved yeah. to Tzvat and lived in Tzvat. And most of the people, well, a lot of the people in that community are people like that. Very, very yeah. much so. Tzvat is a real Orthodox community. Most of the Jews uh, that have moved to Israel, though, are either Orthodox or Messianic because you really have to be a Bible believer. Uh, the, the liberal Jewish community in America would not even be that supportive of Israel necessarily. Uh, it's a hard life over there. It is a hard compared life. Compared to what we have here. And, and the economic, the Jewish community in America, for the most part, has enjoyed real economic success. So mm -hmm. very good question. Thank you so much. We'd love to hear from you. As I said, we still have some time left, about 10 minutes. 888-777-0782. Uh, Dennis, we have some more questions that we have do, come in. Jonathan. Uh, question uh, is... Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu now saying that Israel should give up land to the Palestinians? It's from Amy. Benjamin Netanyahu is under more pressure than any human being that, I, that comes to, my, to mind. He's being pressured by, uh, by the Obama administration. He's being pressured by uh, the uh, liberal... Jewish community in America. He's being pressured even at home uh, because the, the Israelis have lived in a state, constant state of war since 1948, and they're w willing to believe beyond, let me put it this way, beyond what's, what's really sane for peace and any way to find peace. And you deceive yourself into somehow believing the lie that if they just uh, give land away, that somehow there'll be peace, and it's just there's a way that seems right unto man, but the way thereof is death. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is really in a, in, a, in, a, in a vice grip position, but I can tell you he's a strong man, and he's not going to, uh, to subject uh, Israel to indefensible borders. He's just not going to do that. Uh, he made it very clear when he came to the United States that Israel needs to be secure, that we're not going to, that he's not going to allow Israel to be in a position where they could be wiped off the map and we could have another Holocaust. That's not going to happen again. And we saw in the Holocaust that the only, there is no country that, uh, that, that um, 
uh, gave refuge to uh, the Jewish people ultimately, and Israel must exist. So pray for uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. He really needs your prayers. Mm -hmm. My goodness. I can't imagine. Uh, I what can't what imagine. pressure. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Dennis, that was a good question. Uh, there was a, a discussion earlier about uh, possibly Israel being dispersed again, and uh, someone had sent uh, an email question uh, about Jews leaving Jerusalem again and may have come from the book of Revelation. During the Great Tribulation, Jerusalem will be overtaken and people will flee to Petra. What do you think? Yeah, I've heard that for, for 30 years. Uh, e even uh, some that say that teach that there's food stored in Petra. I'm not sure that that's the case. I've been to Petra uh, numerous times. Uh, that comes from Matthew chapter 24 and also Luke chapter 21 that talks about Israel uh, or the Jews fleeing from Israel. I don't fully understand that, to be honest, whether it's yet for future time or has come to pass. Uh, I, I, I just don't fully understand that. And I'm not sure if Petra fits in, into this at all. It's possible it's been taught for uh, decades. Uh, I, I, just, I just don't know. We have another piece I want to show you, by the way, uh, from my, my interview with Bill McKay talking about the heart of the conflict. So I really want you to see this piece. Take a look. Well, Bill, how do you respond to, to, to Christians who, who love the Lord, evangelicals, who would say that Israel has, the Jews have no right to the land of Israel. They're out of covenant with God. Uh, unless they came back into the covenant with God, they wouldn't have the rights to the land. Those that say that Jerusalem is of no importance because Jesus is coming back to a spiritual Jerusalem. I'm hearing this quite a bit, especially in Europe. I'm sure you've heard this quite oh, a bit sure. as well. Well, I would, I would argue that uh, if, if those same principles are applied to Israel, they could be applied to the Christian nations in Europe that are now in a post-Christian culture. They could equally be applied to the American people occupying uh, the North American continent. Uh, so if we uh, fall out of favor with God, which many people would argue that our cultures have, uh, then we would lose our rights to the land. And I'm not sure they're ready to take that argument to its full conclusion. Uh, it's nice for the Jews, uh, as they might argue, but uh, I think that's the business of God. And I look back historically at 17 centuries of diaspora, when the Jews were hunted down by the Europeans and systematically killed and raped and tortured. Their lands were co confiscated in the name of Christianity. And I think this is the time for believers all over the face of the earth to set aside our petty pro prejudices, our notions of theology, and comfort the people of Israel. That's what we're called to do. As I said to you in the green room, Isaiah was not speaking to the Jews to comfort the people of Israel. He was not speaking to those that were torturing the Jews in the 17 centuries of diaspora. He was not talking to the secular humanist. He was talking to the Bible-believing Christians in Europe, in Asia, and in America. We are the only ones that can fulfill that prophecy. That is a command. It's not a suggestion. Amen. A command, not a suggestion. Wow, he really says it like it is. Yeah. I enjoyed my yeah. interview with him. Yeah, it's nice. Rana, what, are, what kind of questions are you getting from, from when you go out to churches uh, from Christians? Are, are you talking about the state of Israel much? I'm not talking about it too much. It's, it's almost sadly something that the church is ignoring. I think the church in a, in a lot of respects has its head in the sand. A lot of churches don't really understand the relevance and the importance that Israel plays in end time prophecy. And that's why we, we're going out to raise those issues, to open up the eyes and to help the church understand that this is a vital issue that we need to be praying for, we need to be educated about, we need to be able to share with people so that people know the truth. You know, Rana, truth be told, uh, my concern about America standing with Israel is not as much for the benefit of Israel because God is clear. He who keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And we have miracle after miracle since Israel was restored in 1948 that show that God is clearly preserving this, this nation. But uh, my concern is for America. Absolutely. Genesis 12, I will Absolutely. bless those that bless thee and curse the one that curses thee. And every nation that has cursed Israel has received a, um, a, a, the, the cursing of God yeah, as a, a result. Absolutely. The sun never set on the British Empire. Look at the British. I was just in 
England, and no offense, I love London, but it, it, it's an anemic country compared to what it once was, and I believe that's the result of their treatment of Israel. Dennis, we have time for one or two more questions. Uh, this one may not have enough time to really answer, but you can give it a good try here. If the Palestinians are committed to peace, why do the Jews have to get out of their territories? It sounds like Nazi Germany, Juden Rhine area is free of Jews. Why would the Western world be a part of establishing such places? Arabs can live in Israel and have representation in the Knesset, don't they? If Israel would just stop oppressing the Palestinians, give them back their land and tear down the wall, wouldn't the hostility from their neighbors in the world end? This is media. That's what the media teaches. I'm not sure. Really the first part <laughs> said, I didn't quite understand the question. I understand seemed to reverse it. itself. But yeah, I, that's I, why. I, I think, is it talking about the Jews getting out of no. the West Bank? Or yeah, they're, they're talking about uh, that uh, if, if we make this two-state solution, all the Jews in those settlements have to get out of the Palestinian areas. Well, why can't areas. they live in, in the... In the why, why do they have... Why can't Jews live in a two-state solution and live in the Palestinian well, states actually, as the Arabs no, do here. See, it's, see, it's the media. Well, no, These that, that's actually a good it. point. No, because I, I see it differently. If the Palestinians really want peace, why wouldn't they welcome the Jewish people living in those areas? And they, they don't. The Jewish communities that live in those areas are terrorized, and they would never... Israel has allowed the Arabs that are in Israel proper to have representation, Absolutely. to live in peace. They own land. They're very well treated. But there's no way that if the Pal a Palestinian state was created that they would allow Jewish people to live there in peace. It just wouldn't be tolerated. And what you have here, and I'm not even sure I understand the question clearly, but it brings up a very valid point, that it wouldn't be allowed, which really shows the intolerance not of the Palestinians, but more of the Muslims. See, you, you, you have uh, a cartoon coming out that, that, is, is, that jokes about something in, that's part of Jewish culture or Jewish religion, and it's laughed off. Certainly, uh, 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 jokes, uh, cartoons that poke at, Christ, at Christianity, but, it, but anything that pokes at Islam, there's an uprising. This is an absolutely intolerant uh, religion. And it's not even a religion. It, it's it's more than that. It it it's it's a it's it's um, a government. Yeah, it's Sharia law. <laughs> it it's it's a system. And it would it absolutely would not tolerate Jew and and uh, Palestinian living in together in a Palestinian state. So you see, land for peace is an absolute fallacy. Uh, so much more I want to cover. We have to go. Uh, we have just a few minutes. I want to go into prayer. Uh, I really want to encourage you to get the booklet that um, I've written, Is Peace Possible? Understanding the Current Middle East Crisis. We need to understand the times. The men of Issachar, it yeah. says, understood the times and they were considered wise. And the Bible's clear that we're to, to know the seasons, that we're not to be ignorant of God's prophetic plan for the world, and that involves Israel and it involves the Jewish people. So you need to educate yourself. Is peace possible? Understanding the current Middle East crisis, you can get it by going to our website and you'll have the directions there on how uh, to get it. And Rana, we really need to be praying Absolutely. for uh, the peace of Jerusalem. We need to be praying that Yeshua, that Jesus would be revealed in the hearts of Jew and Arab alike, Absolutely. Israeli and Palestinian, and most importantly, Jew and Muslim, because mm -hmm. the only way that a Muslim is going to come to a place of peace and acceptance with Israel is through the, the, the reign of the Prince of Peace in their, in their hearts. And we've seen a number of, um, of people on our program. We've had a number of people on our program mm -hmm. that were former terrorists trying to destroy the, the, the state of Israel, like Kamal Salim, a dear friend uh, who now loves Israel and the Jewish people, Walid Shubat, a dear friend who was just with me in Charlotte, who understands and supports the state of Israel because Yeshua has changed his heart. Um, Mossab Yosef, most recently, who, for goodness sake, his father was one of the founders of Hamas, and he believes in the right uh, for of the state of Israel because the Lord has changed his heart. And so we need to be praying for God's peace plan, which can only come through the Prince of Peace. 